anticipating some projectiles there, Mr. Bergman? Well, you know, uh, I've got a lot of students here today, Mr. Sam. There are a lot of people. Yeah, there are a lot of people around, and they're taking, they're taking tests. tests. Yeah, so I, I think they're, they're somewhere mad. They're going to throw things at hey, me. It's entirely possible. Yeah, so that's what I was thinking. They're going to yeah. be mad at me, so because they didn't pass their tests yeah. or whatever. Yeah, so hey. Hey, vapor pressure, though, is an interesting topic. It is. I have some liquid right here. And it makes a vapor pressure. It does. There's some gas above that. And it's yeah, gas? There's gas above there? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, there are. Actually, you're right. And we're talking about phase diagrams, too. So uh, that's pretty cool, too. All right. So let's, I say we do it. Yeah, it's going to be very conceptual. Not a whole lot of math in this topic. Yeah, so. yeah. But, all right. Know. Hey, what happened to my choo-choo train, Mr. Sam? It's broken. It's broken? Yeah. Huh! But it's way broken. Yeah, very much so. How did that happen? Um, big, really gigantic dude stepped on it. I was, that's what I was thinking. It was the giant. But yeah, no, Jolly no, Green Giant. Not the Jolly Green Giant. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's a, it has something to do with vapor pressure. Oh, really? Yeah. Here's what happened. Okay. Think about it. Here's the choo-choo train. Woo, choo-choo-choo-choo. All right, with a little tank right here. And there was a little bit of liquid in it. Okay. Okay. They left the, they left the cap off. Okay. And it got really hot. I think it's like Houston or Dallas or some really hot place. Right? Okay. Here, uh, wheels, I guess. And then somebody went and put the lid on. Uh-huh. And then it got cold. It looks like it might have rained. Yeah, then it probably rained too. Yeah. yeah. And when it got cold, it collapsed. Yeah, because all that vapor that was in there when it was hot, it probably turned back into a liquid. Yeah. So that when it turns into a liquid, then there's no pressure on the inside. Yeah. All right, so guys, the way this works, picture here, there's all these gas particles and they're moving around. And we talked a little bit in the last podcast about what vapor pressure is. All right. So they're moving around. All of a sudden, they got... They, they got cold. Yeah, got cold and turned it's, back into a liquid. And then they liquid. turned back into a puddle of liquid. And now there's no pressure. On you the, actually create a vacuum up here. Yeah. And the pressure on the outside crushes this. We'll there's do a couple of demonstrations in class right. that help kind of illustrate this concept. Right. So more pressure on the outside, less pressure on the inside. But the, the pressure on the outside really didn't change. No, it's just more than there is on the inside. Yeah. And it was enough to, the difference was enough to crush Crush train that car. train, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, actually, picture. I've seen this done with a 50-gallon oil drum I have before. two. That is really cool. Cool. Really, very cool. We'll yeah. do this in class. You'll get to see. We thought about putting yeah. it on the podcast and do a little podcast demo, but we decided it's you just, need to see this oh live. Oh, yes, you need to see it live. So if you're watching this on the Internet, make sure your teacher does this. It's just one of the coolest yeah, things. Yeah, or uh, just look up on the Internet something about a, uh, like a pop can crush or something like that. Yeah. It'll, 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 it'll tell you what to, what to do with the soda can and how to make it crush. And we'll do that in class train. with our yep. group. Hey, and speaking of videos, we do want to make sure we understand the concept of vapor pressure. I yeah. briefly talked about it that last podcast, and you were a slacker. You weren't here. I wasn't here. Where was I was next door. Oh, that's right. I had door. a million kids that needed yeah, help. It was I was helping my students, therefore I'm a slacker. Yes, that's right. Yes. Anyways, but uh, let's uh, watch this quick video clip on what vapor pressure is. Okay. Was Today I want to talk about vapor pressure. Okay, vapor pressure, as we learned, is the pressure of a gas above a liquid. So down here, I happen to have some water boiling. So as you can see, see you can see you can see steam that are steam coming out of the top. Okay, how can we illustrate that? Well, I also have brought a yellow balloon. I like yellow. All right, I'm going to put a yellow Isn't balloon. Is your car yellow too? My car is yellow. Mm -hmm. Right. Hey, look, here. a yellow hot plate. A yellow hot plate. I picked the yellow hot plate. You're going to burn yourself. You know, Sam, I'm going to take <laughs> this and put this down here so I don't put my hand over the hot plate. That's probably a good idea. And I'm going to put this over the top. Ouch, ouch. Grab the guy. Or not. With my fingers and <laughs> burn my fingers. Okay. Now notice as the water boils, it is uh, causing the balloon to expand. Why is that? That's because the gas, actually the liquid is turning to gas and creating more pressure, and the pressure, more molecules, are hitting the inside of the balloon. Pop, 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 pop. As it hits the inside of the balloon, it expands the balloon. Isn't that cool? Okay, I can illustrate that another way too, is I have another, um, flask right here and this flask is filled with very hot water and you can see the steam coming out of it and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the stopper okay the stopper and I'm going to put the stopper into the hole notice he's not jamming the thing down there we don't want the glass to explode actually he is jamming it down there because he wants to see what's going to happen so now what we're going to do is we're going to watch but notice Mr. Bergman is not close he's going to get far away because it is possible you can see the water boiling and so what should it do? Now I want you to think. Actually, it would be good if you paused the video for a second and, and predicted. Oh! Too late. Too late. There it goes. <laughs> it pops the top off, right? So if you think about it here, there's gas pressure. You can see the steam coming out. Mr. Berman burning his fingers once again. You actually can kind of see it's trying to escape. 
But if I jam it down just a little bit. Just a little bit. This bourbon can't seem to get it jammed down too well. It should pop the top off here momentarily. The pressure is building up and it pops the top off. And that's it. Hey, what would have happened if that glassware would have had a crack or a scratch in it? It would have exploded the glassware. That's yeah. why we always use clean glassware. Clean and we're safety glasses. And we're safety glasses. Hey, cool. Cool, Mr. Sams. Very cool. Yeah, I like it when it pops off. Yeah, that's I'm, really I'm cool. I'm glad the flask didn't explode. Yeah, well, it could. And it could have. I was pushing it pretty hard. That's actually. why you had safety glasses. Yes, on. indeed, and I still do. In fact, that was yes, yesterday. you do. <laughs> why are you still wearing your safety glasses? I well, still, I still have in the room. And that's true. Throw things at me. Yeah, yeah my hey, next door. Let's talk about boiling and vapor pressure. Okay. Boiling point. Yes. What's that boiling well, point? Boiling point is when uh, the. It's like when it shakes. Shake it, shake it, shake it. No. 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 Boiling point. That's the temperature. Uh, when a liquid's vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Okay, so here's a very important thing. It's kind of a different thing than what you think. You think of it just going from a liquid to a gas. Yeah, in which it does. It's the That's temperature correct. that that happens. But that specific temperature occurs when, for that per, uh, specific liquid, when its vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure, that's when it boils. So by heating it up, you're increasing the vapor pressure, and eventually you get it hot enough where you increase the vapor pressure to the point of the atmospheric pressure, and that's the temperature um, is where right. the boiling point So happens. in that video that you just watched, we saw water boiling. And mm -hmm. so as we saw that water boiling, the way we in, we made it boil is we increased the temperature by putting it on the hot plate. Right. And what happened, of course, is the vapor pressure increased and it equaled the atmospheric pressure. There's kind of a, a balance between up and down, yep. which causes that to occur. All right, you keep talking. I'm going to go help some students. I'll be right back. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the help of the student thing. What yeah. are you doing with that? So there's something called the normal boiling point, And that is the boiling point at one atmosphere. Because boiling point is not just a function of temperature. It's also a function of the pressure. Now, one atmosphere is the pressure we learned at uh, a previous pod, last podcast, the, the pressure at sea level, okay, on an average day, which is 760 torr, or one atmosphere, which we learned about. And so, what happens if you're at a different altitude? What happens to the boiling point? So, well, actually, here's the answer. This is an important graph. Make sure you copy this down, um, or you could print it. Um, what happens is, is this is the uh, this is a vapor pressure chart. Vapor pressure versus temperature. And so, let's say that you live um, in Woodland Park, Colorado. Let's say, for the sake of argument, where the vapor pressure, or probably the atmospheric pressure, is roughly 575 millimeters of mercury. If you draw a line right here, you would actually draw a line down here, and you can find the boiling point of water in Woodland Park. Notice right here, this is at 760 torr. This is at one atmosphere. We say water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. That's true at one atmosphere, but it is not true in Woodland Park. In fact, water boils here at roughly about 92 degrees Celsius at 8,500 feet. And uh, of course, that varies with temperature. In fact, hey, I think we should go to a, on a field trip. This is a cool trip. I did this trip this summer. Um, you'll see. And when I'm talking about boiling point, we're not going to just go to Woodland Park, but my lord, we're going to go to a very tall mountain. Here I am at the top of Mount Evans, and we've been talking about how water boils at different temperatures. Okay, Mount Evans is 14,200 feet, something like that, and the water is boiling. But I want you to notice that water is boiling at a mere 87.7 degrees Celsius. 87. Now water really boils at sea level at 100 degrees Celsius, but here we are at 14,000 feet, and because of the less pressure, there's less vapor pressure pushing on the water because of the altitude or less air pressure, um, the vapor pressure can overcome the atmospheric pressure and the water can boil. That was pretty cool, Mr. Sams. Yeah. So it boils at a colder temperature. Now yeah. why is that, Mr. Sams? Uh, well, the boiling point is when the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. So if you have a lower atmospheric pressure where you do at higher elevations, then the temperature that it's going to take to get your vapor pressure up to that atmospheric pressure is going to be lower. Folks, the idea is that at the top of that mountain, the top of Mount Evans, there is less gas particles. So if you were to look at the top of a mountain and like, you know, take a cube of air, what you would find, maybe let's say there's six air particles, okay. it'd, be very, it'd be a very small piece of air. But then if you went down um, at sea level... An equal volume piece. You uh, might find um, eight or ten. Right, it's just more... Actually, a better way to do it would be uh, if we did ten, they'd say that there were, um, down at the bottom, there were ten. At the top of that mountain, I'm going to guess there's seven. Right. So you've got 30% less air, at least that mountain. If you go to the top right. of Mount Everest, it might be six or five even. I don't yeah, know. yeah. So, yeah, there's it's less particles. It's less so dense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Get the idea? I think it's pretty cool. All right. Yeah. Now, boiling and vapor pressure. So that, that ultimately means that there's two ways that we can boil a liquid. You can either... Increase the vapor pressure. 
You can eat. Yeah. Oops. Hello. I've got little lines. Just two things. Yep. Here's the little deal. Increase the temperature, which right? Increases which the vapor the pressure. The vapor pressure, right? Or so actually, let's make a note there, guys. The the result of this, the reason this works, is this increases the vapor pressure. That's what increasing the temperature does. Right. Or you can lower the pressure or decrease right. the pressure. And then that would be the atmospheric pressure we're talking about there. Yeah. Lower the atmospheric pressure, which is what I did by riding my bike to the top of that mountain. Right. Now, when you come to class, we're going to do another cool demo that you really want to see live. Oh, um, my gosh. Where we're going to lower... The best demo of the year. It Mr. is. Sands. It's very cool. Yeah. And we're going to lower the atmospheric pressure in a closed system, and it's really, really cool. Very cool. And you'll have to explain it. it it's yeah, amazing. It's awesome. Because we're amazing. But actually, Pretty much. No, actually, because science is amazing. It's not us. The world well, is speak, itself. Speak for amazing. yourself, man. Well, I'm amazing, <laughs> but not as amazing as science. Okay, All right. so this is kind of saying the same thing, but let's kind of put it in terms of altitude. So the okay. higher the altitude, the... Lower the vapor, or lower the atmospheric pressure. Lower the pressure. When I say pressure here, I'm talking about the atmospheric pressure. Right. Okay, the higher the altitude, the... the lower the boiling point. The lower the boiling point. So lower atmospheric pressure. Remember, I think it boiled at, wasn't the, something like 87 degrees at the like top that. of that mountain, where normally it's 100 degrees. Right. Woodland Park, level. it's 92, 92 93-ish, yeah. something like that. So when the vapor pressure equals the... Atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure, the substance will boil. boils. So that's pretty cool. Well, actually, I put words in here. I'm pretty good at that, aren't I? Well, well that's good. Okay. Let's talk about solids. Let's kind of change gears a little bit. Okay. Um, melting point. What's melting point? I don't know what the size is. Hey, hey guys. guys. So we're talking about melting points. Okay. Now I think you know this. I mean, this is sort of melting point. Yeah. So if I have a piece of ice and put it in my hand, it like melts. Right. So, and so that's the temperature that a substance goes from solid to liquid. So we could draw it like this. We can say solid. This will put a little like uh, scientific notations. Arrow. Actually, we'll do double arrow and say liquid. Okay. So when you go across this direction, it will melt. And actually, when you cross the other direction, it will freeze. freeze. And that occurs at the same temperature. The melting point and the freezing point of something is the same that temperature. That is correct. Mm -hmm. So here is actually a pretty cool oh, picture. That's cool. We have a, a guy holding um, some solid, what is that? Probably gallium. Gallium? It yeah. could be mercury, too. Well, it wouldn't well be that, a, mercury wouldn't be a solid at room temp. Oh, that's but right. Oh, yeah, it would be gallium. Gallium, right. gallium will actually that's right. melt this is in gallium. your hand. Yeah. L-I-U-M? Yep, Whatever. I-U-M. Yeah. Gallium. So that's gallium, so it will melt in your hand. It's yeah. a liquid, a metal. Or it's a solid, but it's just right at the boiling point. And of course, this is a classic picture. Of course, we have ice and water. I'm not sure I'd want to be walking with this guy's <laughs> going. Uh, this is probably a river here, but actually, I know what the temperature of that water is, Mr. Sam's. I don't what? even have a thermometer with me. Really? Yeah. You know what, what is it is? It? It's zero degrees Celsius. Because it How is do you know that? The, Well, because the water has ice in it. And all ice water is going to be zero oh, degrees Celsius yeah. because it has got substances that are solid and liquid. And so some of it's melting or freezing, depending on whether it's kind of colder or getting warmer. Yeah. Usually, I'd guess this is probably getting warmer this time of the day, here. Okay, we can also talk about solids. Now, there's a funny thing called an allotrope. Okay. Mr. Sanders, what is an allotrope? Uh, well, uh, it's when you have a solid and mm -hmm. it's the same element, but same it has element. a different configuration and sometimes like a different formula. Yeah, usually like a different formula. So yeah. different solid forms of the same element. So yeah. a classic example is sulfur. We can have sulfur that has this eight uh, part uh, uh, little ring, ring, thing. yeah, and so that's S8, and then there's something called white phosphorus. Oh, yeah, oh. different element. Oh, this is a wa yeah, so white phosphorus and black phosphorus. Right. White phosphorus has this we call a tetrahedral, tetrahedral arrangement, and this is kind of a cubic arrangement. Right. So there are actually two different varieties of the same. Yeah, chemical. so same elements just arranged differently. Carbon. Carbon's uh, pretty have, cool. Yeah. So. There's several uh, allotropes of carbon. Let's yeah. actually put them all up here. Actually, yep. there they are. This right, right here um, is the um, uh, elemental all, configuration of a diamond. diamond. Yeah, that's all uh, tetrahedral arrangements. What we call that. Over here we've got these sheets of carbon, and then that's graphite, so that's what's in your pencil. Now see how those sheets are kind of stacked on top of each other, they'll slide on top of each other. That's, that's why graphite is real yeah. slippery. Mm -hmm. And also why we uh, use it for pencil lead, because it can yep. slide off. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of the most famous, well, the most recent famous yeah. one, I should say. Diamonds are pretty famous. A buckyball. This is called a buckyball. Or Buckminster Fullerene. There was, why is it called Buckminster Fuller? Because there was somebody named Buckminster Fuller who came up with it. That's exactly right. So they named it some famous science Yeah, team. they're actually using that to deliver really, really tiny particles to um, um, spots where it could normally get. It's called like, you know, nanotechnology. They're yeah. making also things called nanotubes. They're making something similar in a tube arrangement to uh, deliver things. A lot of medications cool applications, and applications like to yeah. this whole thing. Pretty okay. Nice. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Some more things here. Um, there's something called an amorphous solid. I think yeah, they're pretty cool. Yeah, they're very You know, we're going to do an amazing demo towards the end of the year, though, with the amorphous water. 
and the fish. Mm -hmm. Don't ever want to miss. It is the coolest. You know, we talked about the other demo being the coolest demo of the year. This is the this is right coldest demo of the year. So yeah. it's kind of cool and cold at the same time. Yeah. yeah. You have to watch that. Okay. An amorphous solid is a solid when it cools down quickly and does not form a crystalline structure. Right. It, we call it flash freezing. It cools really, 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 really fast. Yeah. And so more, usually when a solid freezes, it forms into a crystal. But if it's cooled too quickly, it it's not going to happen. It into a block. So actually, here's the classic picture right here. Here we have um, a picture of some obsidian. Obsidian is volcanic glass. Mm -hmm. This substance right here, it cooled down very quickly. This was in a volcano. Um, and when the volcano, when the volcanic um, rock cooled so quickly, it did not have a chance to form right. a, a Might crystal. Might have hit some water or something yeah. like that and formed and fro er, froze and um, solidified really, really quickly. Yeah, into froze, a, that's good. Right. Yeah. Glass in, in your window, is a, it's, it's similar. It's, uh, it's an amorphous solid. It doesn't have a regular shape. Yeah. So a glass, yeah, glass is an amorphous solid. It's not a regular shape. It actually is the same consisting of silicon dioxide. Okay. So actually, we talk about glasses, not yeah. as in glasses like the safety glasses, but in glasses like uh, for... Uh, Just different types of glass. Yeah, different kinds of glass. They, they are amorphous solids of silicon and oxygen. So it's good to know. Yeah. All right. One more topic today. Phase diagrams. Uh, phase diagrams are pretty cool. I like these. So let's talk about those phase diagrams. These are actually called tertiary phase, di phase diagrams because you have um, several things you're going to look at. It's a chart that shows temperatures and the pressures for a given substance. Okay. Now, there's a term we haven't defined yet, Okay. and that's called sublimation. Now yeah. We need to talk about this real fast. Sublimation is when a substance goes from a solid to a gas. Yeah, and it doesn't pass through the liquid phase. It goes directly from a solid to a gas. If you've ever played with uh, dry ice, you'll notice you have a chunk of solid, and then it just turns into vapor, and it never goes to the liquid phase. That's why it's called dry ice. It's not really ice. It's actually frozen carbon dioxide. But um, it's called dry because it doesn't go through the liquid phase and make things wet. That's correct. And actually, the opposite, gas to solid, is called deposition. Right. It gets so deposited. Deposited. Okay, here is the classic um, uh, phase diagram. Let's talk about carbon dioxide. This happens to be carbon dioxide. So I want you to kind of understand what's going on in this. On this um, um, axis, on the y-axis, we have the pressure measured in uh, pounds per square inch of carbon dioxide. And so um, the pounds per square inch uh, on the Earth... Um, I think it's 32 pounds, isn't it? It's, I don't I, know. I, I never really think in pounds per square inch. I think pounds per square inch the, uh, is 32. So right here, if I have solid ice, solid um, carbon dioxide, and then if I were to heat it up, it will travel. This is temperature down here, of course. It's going to um, sublime or sublimate. Go from say. the solid to the vapor. Right. And so, But this is cool is that we have interesting. This is the solid region. Mm -hmm. This is the vapor or the gas region. And this is the liquid region. And you can see the borders between them. Right. Now, this is an important thing to draw a picture of. Of, ladies right. and gentlemen, just sketch it. You don't have to have all the blues and the reds and things. Okay, and so this is, um, they call this the vapor region, and then this the gas region. That's not really that critical. Basically, this stuff is all vapor. Now, we should talk about a very important point we call the triple point. Now, what happens at the triple point? Um, then you have uh, solids, liquids, and gases, all three present at the same time. That's kind of cool. You can have it's solid, liquid, cool. and gas at the same time. Now, we'll show you a demo with carbon dioxide, yeah. effect, where you get to see this is very, very cool. Yep. And there's another point called the critical point. What's the critical point? Um, beyond that point, you can't have liquids, basically. So it's always a gas beyond right. that temperature. Yep. For, for carbon dioxide, that is simply about, it looks like 90 degrees yeah. Celsius. So if you're above 90 degrees Celsius, carbon dioxide cannot be anything but a gas. Yeah. All right, and then you can see a liquid. So now, this liquid vapor boundary, when you cross this boundary, what mm -hmm. happens, Mr. Sanders? Um, then you're going to go from a liquid to a gas, so it's boiling. That's boiling, and if you go across this way, it'll condense. Condensing. And so when you cross this line, Mr. Sims, uh -huh. that would be... Solid to liquid is uh, melting. And going across this way... It's freezing. Freezing. And we didn't draw this line, so this is sublimating, and this is... Deposition. Deposition. Right. All right, pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Now here's the little flash dryer game of water. Now this one's a little different, Mr. Sams. Yeah. Something is a little different. What's the difference, Mr. Sams, on this one? Um. There's one line that's different. I'm looking for it. It is this line right Show here. Me. Oh yeah, that one goes kind of to the left. You know, on the on the vapor pressure diagram of carbon dioxide, this line right here was had a positive slope. Yeah, it did. This one here has a negative slope. Mm. So water is different. This actually explains why water is 
or ice, is less dense than water, and why ice floats on water. Because its phase diagram is one of the only ones, I, I think there might be a couple other ones, I don't know what, exactly what they are, I've never heard of another one, but no. that has a negative slope for this line. Yeah, water's weird. Yeah, water's a strange But substance. it's a good thing. This These is actually a good picture. Like. You can see the vaporization, condensation. We saw that with the callouts in the last picture, sublimation and deposition there mm -hmm. as well. So that's pretty cool. So you can see that. Now that leads to something very intriguing. Actually, here's uh, another picture of it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, we should just back up. When we have one atmosphere, which is, you know, roughly where most people live, you know, here in the park or maybe here. But if you were to heat up water... As I added temperature from a solid, solid to, a, to liquid, a liquid to a gas, to a it would gas. boil. Yep. Now I could boil the water by just having it drop down that way, couldn't right. I? Right, so you could reduce the pressure instead of increasing the temperature. That's correct. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Now this is actually a cool picture. Now, so um, if you watch the Olympics or into figure skating, something interesting happens right here as, as the ladies uh, skate hits the ice. What happens? To the ice. Uh, well, I... Let's think there, about it. Is there another picture? Okay, yeah, let's think about it. Okay, so all of her weight, let's say, they're usually pretty small. Let's say she weighs 100, 100 pounds. pounds. 100 right. pounds. 100 pounds, pushing down on that, on that tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of her skate. That means all of her weight is being focused on that How about, like, point. per, like, maybe half an inch? Yeah, probably half an inch square. square. It's a very tiny area, so that would be uh -huh. like, I could do the math. You would actually divide that. You'd say there'd be 200 pounds per square inch. Per square inch. Okay, that's a lot of pressure being pushed down on that ice. So we have a, a high pressure on that small area. So actually, if you go back to the phase diagram, uh -huh. so ice is, of course, a solid. Right. And if we say we're right here and uh -huh. we increase, increase the, pressure, the pressure. Hey, look, it goes into the it liquid It turns phase. into this say so it becomes a liquid. So interesting yep. enough, people think she's skating on ice. No. She's they, they say like on Disney on ice, no, right? No. It's like actually Disney on, on water. water. Because what's happening is, is it creates all these lines. You can see all the lines in the, on the ice. Mm -hmm. They make small pockets of water, liquid water, and then it's easier for them to um, uh, skate on the water, actually. There's ice underneath it. So, so that's pretty cool. All right. Hey, one last thing. I want to do the phase diagram of carbon. Hello, something just pulled up on my computer. The phase diagram of carbon is um, carbon. Remember, we talked about the allotropes of carbon, diamonds and graphites, liquid and uh, vapor. But interestingly enough, there's actually two triple points for um, carbon. The graphite vapor liquid triple point, and there's also the diamond liquid graphite. Um. So how do you make a diamond? This is an interesting thing. To make a diamond, all you simply need to do is take graphite, not simply, it's not so simple as that, and you can increase the pressure. If you increase the pressure, it will turn into a diamond. And so diamonds can be uh, manufactured, not just dug out of the ground, but manufactured. And um, yeah, then you make a diamond by just increasing the pressure to somewhere above 10 to the 9th pascals, which is a very high number, by the way. <laughs> so very, very high pressures. You can turn graphite. So I could like take something that has uh, a graphite in it, like a pencil lead, and if I apply enough pressure, I will turn it into a diamond. And so I'll make a cheap pencil and turn it into an expensive diamond. How cool would that be? That is very cool. Okay, so that ends.